Hey, what's up everybody? It's Tuesday, June 23rd. How's it going? Yeah, how's it going yesterday? New York City opened up in phase two. We had outdoor dining at restaurants. It was pretty nice walking around my neighborhood, seeing all the restaurants and the activity. I got a haircut, but I didn't go to the barber. This is a homemade job with uh, the old clippers. Yeah. All right, let's talk about what's going on. So, a kind of a quiet day. NASDAQ made a new high. Not much to report on the, uh, the data front. Everything's still kind of like what I've been telling you about. Last night, we had some whipsaw action. What's his name? Peter Navarro came out last night around 10 p.m. Eastern Time, and he said, the China deal is off. No China trade deal. The market dropped, dropped 400 points, Dow futures down 400 points, and I thought to myself, oh boy, that's going to pop right back up. And sure enough, today we rallied, but uh, we gave up, you know, a portion of the gains at the close. I still say kind of like the jury is out on this situation. We have rising coronavirus cases in Florida and Arizona. Arizona is a big hot spot now, um, and I'm not talking about the weather. <laughs> Texas, North Carolina, South Carolina, New York actually has the fewest number of new cases. So we were at, we were the top and now that we're like really at the bottom now. So that's been a great achievement here. Let's hope it sticks. You know, uh, some of you may know that Stephanie Kelton, economist, MMT economist, is out with a new book called The Deficit Myth. It's getting a lot of attention, mostly positive reviews. I came across one blog today, which I thought had a, some pretty good commentary on uh, some of the ideas that Kelton expresses. For example, on the national debt, this blog wrote it as follows, and I think this is, this is really clever. What do you call the dollars left in the economy that are not taken away in taxes? There's two answers. Answer number one, those are the dollar assets of the population. Answer number two, it's the national debt. Both of those answers are correct. So the dollars that are left in the economy, not paid in taxes, in other words, the dollars in our pockets, in our bank accounts, etc., that is, that comprises the financial assets of the population and also, or the dollar denominated financial assets of the population and that's also the national debt. They're the same, they're one and the same. They're one and the same. So when you understand it that way, and I've said it so many times, there is no debt. The government spends more than it takes away in taxes. That surplus of dollars, right, if it spends more than it takes away in taxes, that surplus in dollars is what we own, not what we owe. And the only way for the government to reduce the debt or eliminate the debt, as so many people want, they, the government would have to take back that money that we own. Now, when you think about it, it's completely ridiculous. Now, here's another analogy. Your bank account is an asset to you. It is a liability to the bank. Suppose you went to the bank and said, hey, I want you to reduce your liability. The bank would have to take the money back from your, bank, from your checking account. Now, that's ridiculous. Nobody would do that. Can you imagine, you know, thousands of depositors Thousands of banking customers go into the bank and say, hey, we're not happy with your liabilities. You have to eliminate them or reduce them. The only way the bank could do that is by taking away your checking account, taking away the money in there. It's, an, it's a liability to the bank. It's an asset to you. Same thing for the government. It's a liability to the government. In what form is it a liability? It says right on the dollar bill uh, that this is acceptable for payment of all debts, public and private. It's the public part of that that's important. The government promises, the promise it makes is that 
it will accept its own money for the payment of taxes. So, all the money left in the economy that is not paid in taxes is the financial assets of the population and it's also the national debt. They're one and the same. Those are just dollars outstanding that have not been paid in taxes and they may never be. They may never be. And the only way for the government to reduce its debt is for the government to take back that money. And, and if you think about it, it's ridiculous to be going out there saying we want the government to reduce its debt because basically you're saying uh, we want the government to take away our dollars. How does that leave anyone in a better position? It doesn't. It simply doesn't. It impoverishes the population or it reduces the wealth of the population by a dramatic amount, by what, 25 trillion now. If the government were to reduce its debt, so-called debt, right, have to take 25 trillion away from the non-government, from the population, take 25 trillion away. That's like a whole entire year of, of GDP. Take it away. It's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous concept. And what's more ridiculous is that people are running around talking about it. That's what they want. It comes out of sheer ignorance. Pure ignorance that they don't know what they're talking about. It's the same thing as if you went to your bank and say, take away my checking account because you have too many liabilities. Your checking account is your asset, it's the bank's liability. That's like you saying to the bank, hey, I don't like your liabilities, they're too high. It's gonna be a burden to some future depositor and, and, his, and that depositor's kids and grandkids. You gotta reduce your liabilities. You see what I mean? And so the bank, all right, your checking account is closed, zero balance. That wipes out our liability, at least for your checking account, but it has to do it for everybody. It has to do it for all the checking accounts. Zero balance for all the checking accounts, bank's liability just went away. That's what you want? That's what people want? I mean, think about it. It's retarded. It's completely retarded. It's so ignorant. I mean, it's like some crazy, you know, myth, some primitive belief from some backward tribe in the jungle somewhere, you know, thinking who knows what. That's exactly what it is. And that's what people want. On another note, Let's talk markets a little bit now. In today's API oil inventory release, just a short time ago, another build in crude inventories. That's the third week in a row. Now, we're supposed to be in this rebounding economy. First of all, crude inventories are at an all-time record high, and we just added to that in this recent week, at least according to the APIs. Third week in a row of increase. And by the way, that comes as we have seen a huge cut in domestic oil production down 2.6 million barrels a day since February. That's huge, all right? That's like a 20% reduction in oil production since February. In four months, 20% cut, a 20% cut. And it's going down further. I mean, rig count is still dropping. So like, why are we seeing inventories build and, and um, imports are still really low? You would think an economic rebound would result in some draw in those inventories, particularly since domestic production has fallen so much. In that same report, gasoline inventories were down a little tiny bit, less than a million barrels, like fractional, uh, you know, I think it was like something like... Uh, 600,000 barrels or something like that. This loot was down, but that, that was like the first week it was down in a long, long time. That's just been building straight up. I mean, it kept, it kept on building and building and building. And really the only reason I think why this loot was down was because in that last EIA report last week, we saw a big drop in this production. 
So what's going on? Well, we're going to see the numbers tomorrow. I mean, petroleum demand and the petroleum markets, I think, are a good barometer of what's going on with the economy. Remember, I said last week we saw a decrease in gasoline demand at a time when more things are opening up. So what is going on? What is going on? Now, again, I might be jumping the gun. I might be looking at these things and the boom is about to hit because things are starting to open up. Look, I just I started off by saying New York City was open. People were out. So the boom may be about to hit. But the market's overbought, folks. All right, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30-day free trial of MMT Trader. And I'll be out with a new podcast tomorrow. The links for both of those things are right here in the description below. Click on it. Bye.